there was a bunny rabbit just bouncing around in front of our apartment building, which is kind of cute. And I think I caught some footage of it. So if I was successful, enjoy the bunny rabbit. If I was not, then enjoy the readathon wrap up video. <laughs> everyone welcome back to onyx pages it's in jerry thank you very much for being here uh, it is the weekend after the readathon and i wanted to take this opportunity to first of all thank you for those of you who joined me to participate in my daily vlogs or at least daily vlogs for five out of the seven days of the readathon toward the end i had to go back to work and i had a lot on my plate so i wasn't able to film but i definitely um, did some more reading and i read throughout the week so in this video i'm going to tell you what i read what I enjoyed, what I learned, and then I will just say thank you Readathon 2020. All right, so the first, not in any particular order, but, uh, and, you, and I will ask you to go back to the videos if you want to find out more about my experience of reading these books as I actually read them. But the first one is Malaika's Costume, written by Nadia Al Hahn. This is a children's book that follows Malaika, who is a young girl living in a Caribbean island that is unnamed, but I believe that it's Trinidad. Her mother has immigrated to Canada, and her mother promised to send money so that she can live her life in Trinidad, the little girl with her grandmother, but also so that she could buy a costume for the upcoming carnival. Uh, her mom doesn't her mom doesn't send the money and so she has to figure out how she's going to participate in the carnival and how she's going to have a beautiful costume without the money that her mother sends so it is a very sweet story i cried it was loving the art was really beautiful as you can see very saturated color very accessible art that that speaks it feels kind of like collage art so i enjoyed it and i would recommend it to um to anybody who wants a beautiful like immigration story, a beautiful story um, centering a black child, a story that speaks specifically about the experiences of families that are separated as a result of migration and some of the economic uh, tensions that can uh, occur as a result or family relationship tensions that can occur as a result and then the role of community in filling that gap or providing support for children living in that environment. So uh, Nadia has written a number of Malaika books. I think she's up to three. One is um, one is a winter carnival and then I actually forget what the second one was. But yes, you can Google and find out. Okay, the other book that I read was Say Her Name, which is a collection of poems written by Zeta Elliott and also some collected poems written by um, uh, famous black American poets who wrote their poetry um, in order to support the, rev like the revolution in literary arts, but also to capture the sentiments of black women uh, in, in the U.S. Uh, so Say Her Name, of course, you'll remember the slogan Say Her Name, and that comes from the, um, the Black Lives Matter movement where there was a recognition that there was an, a, a real focus on cis 
hetero black men being killed by police where the reality is oh there's the bunny let me see see if you can see the bunny do you see the bunny <laughs> it's like in the bushes anyway back to me so um so say her name is a great collection of poetry i really enjoyed the poems um you if you want to listen to some of the poems then you can go to the live uh show that i did on saturday i think it's up um zeta elliott actually joined us during the live show slash reading sprint live reading sprint and it was really wonderful the poems are beautiful um, they were very touching um, zeta uses a lot of different styles and there is some beautiful illustrations inside the poetry book so it's actually quite beautiful um, to read the colors were really nice and the artist is her name is love is wise and she's a black uh, female illustrator so really great collection Okay, the third book I'm going to talk about is The Salt Roads. I actually started this before the readathon, but in, this follows uh, four main characters, all women who are experiencing different kinds of oppression and enslavement, and one otherworldly being that ties all of their stories together. The Salt Roads is really uh, a story that that asks questions like what connects our lives together? What are the different ways that um, black women can get free? Um, what does emancipation and revolution look like? How does, how does emancipation express itself in our sexual relationships, our familial relationships, our spiritual relationships, our relationships to self and relationship to community? Uh, this was a wonderful, wonderful read. Uh, Nalo Hopkinson knocked it out of the park once again. I will probably do a longer review of this, but I loved it. I think it was my second time reading that book. I also spent a lot of time reading The Marrow Thieves by Cherie Demoline. Uh, Cherie Demoline is a Métis author, and in this story we follow the main character, who is um, Métis himself. This is a near future Canada in which it is believed that the marrow inside the bones of indigenous people can restore the lost talent of dreaming. And so a second residential, residential school um, project has been instituted by the church, by the government, um, and by the, like, the school system, the police system to capture indigenous people and to try and, and get the marrow from their, their bones. Um, and we follow a group of people who are really like trying to escape this um, genocidal project. That's what it is. Uh, and really, it, the story really spends a lot of time focusing on their experiences as they're moving through the woods trying to get to the north where they can be safe um, so it is quite character driven um, there are a lot of um, different kinds of relationships relation intergenerational relationships the relationship between chosen family and and blood family um, relationship between different indigenous groups relationship between non-indigenous people of color and indigenous peoples and then there's a question about the role of allies so it's a very uh, it was a, a fairly quick read uh, funny in places um, my only drawback with this book was in the middle it got really intense in terms of like the triggers uh, and the graphicness of the violence so there was definitely sexual violence and other forms of violence throughout this entire book so it started off kind of lighter and then it it got it got intense and then it went back up to being a little bit lighter and i, I think that that dip was was a bit distracting for me uh, but i am so glad uh, that i read this um, i definitely would recommend this novel to anyone anyone who's interested in speculative fiction written from the perspectives of indigenous people but that also uh, integrates the story of emancipation with of indigenous peoples on turtle island with other stories right um, 
I was surprised to see the the ethnic diversity that was reflected in the story and it's very much there's something very Toronto very Canadian about the way that that part um, played out so um, really really glad that I read this and then the final there are children like standing just outside of the frame staring at me it's very cute um, and then the last book that I read is the collection Black Writers Matter. I just finished this yesterday. This is a collection of creative nonfiction edited by the lovely Whitney French. Um, and this was a really good collection. Um, I will say that I probably loved 80% of the pieces and there, many of the pieces were quite short so you could read pieces that were four pages long up to 20 pages long great diversity in terms of the uh, experience levels of the writers and the kinds of topics that they cover um, they're just such a vast array Whitney calls this a gathering of stories and I think that's the best way to describe it it wasn't it's not even a collection but a gathering right a very intentional attempt to to broaden the stories of of Canadian people in a way that really reflects the kind of um, like diversity of experience and I'll give you an example there's a story written by uh, a black South Asian person who um, writes about her experience of anti-black racism within her South Asian household and what it means to, to have grown up with blood roots in these two particular um, racial groups. Um, there, is, there are interviews with Afro-Indigenous uh, young people, so those are people who have ancestry coming from Africa and ancestry from indigenous people from Tur Turtle Island talking about their experiences of um, dealing with racism and dealing with uh, colonialism from both of those perspectives. Um, there is an essay written by the uh, the owner and the founder of Sister Vision Press, which was a black lesbian publishing house that was around for about 18 years, starting in 1983. I was familiar with their work. Uh, they've since closed down, but while they were around, this group of basically volunteer women um, did so many great things and published a lot of really amazing work that we haven't really seen come out of Toronto um, recently. So. Uh, there is that, and then just a, just a lot of really cool stories. One of my favorite stories is a story written by a young black man who talks about um, be, feeling comfortable in the Canadian wilderness and what it means to be both black um, and dealing with the stereotype of being savage and animalistic but also feeling like, see, there's a person, but also feeling like he's not able to, um, feeling like he's not able to really feel like he could, you know, be a part of cottage country, for example. So that was like super cool. Yeah, I don't want her to be on. I don't want to be. <laughs> Hi. Um, so yeah, so this, this one was really good and I would definitely recommend this for anybody. Like if you, if you don't, if you don't live in Canada, and you are interested in learning more about what it's like what it's like to be here and be black in Canada and to write and publish being black and young in Canada like there's another uh, story that was really sweet written by someone I know um, about being black and queer um, and 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 in a Christian university and coming out there um, and coming out to family in the face of all of the um, the heteronormativity and homophobia just really wonderful experiences and and I actually would consider um, this work really Afrofuturist because um, as the writers get into their personal essays they also talk about the kind of Canada that we ought to be seeing every day that ought to be portrayed as normal um, a lot of people believe that there's not a lot of diversity in Canada um, and that racism isn't an issue both of those things are wrong um, some people mistakenly believe that because there's a lot of diversity in Canada, there isn't racism. That's also wrong. So just some really great, great, great um, collections. So these are the five books that I read uh, during or throughout 
uh, the Readathon. It was a pleasure to host the Readathon uh, with all of the other hosts. And as I said earlier, thank you for, for participating and thank you to those of you who were constantly watching um, the vlogs and just like being really lovely. I think shout outs to Sky Angel and to Josh because you were like very present as I went through all of the vlogs. I know there are a number of you who were, uh, but those are the two names that I remember right now, um, who I think was the first time that you engaged with me so regularly on my channel. I noticed that and I definitely appreciate that. All right, so if you watch, I don't know what that is, but if you participated in the readathon, what was your most favorite book and your least favorite book that you read during the seven days um, and I think I will ask you if you have I just saw a peacock which is one of like it's one of my favorite animals my favorite birds so if you have watched this all the way to the end then um, please um, please put a peacock in your comments or any kind of bird or you can put the word peacock but I would prefer like a picture so yes thank you very much for watching remember to read with purpose and I am going to shout out who am I gonna shout out today I really should prepare this um, before yes I am gonna shout out comfy cozy up now Comfy Cozy Up is awesome. Um, Pitta's her name. She's Jamaican. She's one of the, like, part of the first set of booktubers that I started to watch when I uh, started my channel. And she's really great. She reads a lot of romance. And she also is very active on Instagram and has started hashtag a journal mood. So if you're a journaler, she does. <laughs> my god she does prompts every day and she's great there's this like really you know how I am about bees this is not even a bee it's something black and really big so anyway um thanks very much for watching and I will see you next time bye